Yeah. Uh, right now, we remain in our belief that 19 people who were wounded yesterday remains the number of victims. As we've discussed, many of the wounds were superficial, glancing wounds, and there were some that were direct on gunshot wounds. We have no ability to give you the condition of those persons who went through surgery yesterday, but we do know that they are still receiving medical care, and we cannot really discuss their conditions. We're still trying to determine if there was more than one gunman and whether there was more than one weapon on the scene. We have recovered ballistic evidence, and that ballistic evidence is giving us very good leads to work on. Our detectives from the 5th District, under the leadership of Commander Goodley and Lieutenant Hart, have worked virtually nonstop since yesterday afternoon with many members of the New Orleans Police Department in support, our gang unit, intelligence unit, and certainly many of our partnerships in the federal government, the FBI, the ATF, DEA, and others. One of our best partners in this entire thing is, of course, Crime Stoppers. And last night, Darlene Costanza allowed us and authorized us to announce at the 10 o'clock news cycle that a $10,000 reward was being offered. As soon as that issue, literally as soon as that went out, we started getting more information. So again, we want to thank Crime Stoppers and we want to remind people, please call if you know anything. We also want to remind people that the Advanced use of cell phones and handheld video devices has been throughout this event. So if you know of anyone or you have any such audio or video evidence, please forward it to us. You can forward it to Crime Stoppers or you can forward it to the police department or you can forward it to the DEA, the FBI, the ATF. Whoever you feel comfortable with, please forward that information. There were dozens of people in yesterday's second line. We know that there's still some of you who know information, so please reconsider and let us know. I don't think anybody who lives in the city of New Orleans wants to know something that could help us solve this case. Think about the young children who were hurt. Think about the 10-year-old who was hurt, the 9-year-old who was hurt. And if you had information that could help us, I know you want to tell us. So please call Crime Stoppers and let them know and let them help our detectives. Our lead detectives, Robert Hurst and Ray L. Johnson of the 5th District, under the leadership of Sergeant McCabe in the 5th District, are making significant headway in this case. I can assure whoever did this, we know a lot more about you than you think we do. And my recommendation to you is to collect yourself and turn yourself into the nearest police facility, the district attorney's office, or anywhere you may want. At this time, we would like to ask uh, Darlene Costanza to say a few words and Phil Durham with the ATF. It was the ATF that helped advance the award amount last night from 5,000 to ten thousand dollars and then we'll take some questions uh, after that we're also joined today by dave reichert of the fbi representing the fbi
that's that's what we want everyone to know is they've got the full force of the federal government along with the state locals here trying to stop this violence. Two final quick points and I answer a couple questions. I want to remind you that two children were struck in this incident. And if you choose not to tell the police what you know, then you're choosing to stand with those who shot those children. Please call Crime Stoppers and help us solve this case. Tonight at 6 p.m., Mayor Landrieu is calling for the people of New Orleans to take part in a community shooting response at the corner of North Villery and Frenchman. It'll be a show of solidarity and a show that New Orleans is stronger than this and that we will not tolerate this type of crime. And when we are together, we are much stronger than any criminal anywhere in the city of New Orleans. Question? Chief, yeah. you had cops there on parade detail when the shooting happened. A lot of our listeners today wanted to know, how did the guy get away with all those officers? Well, first and foremost, you know, we've talked about this before. Our officers are trained to render aid and criminal investigation at the same time. You can imagine at this corner with a couple hundred people, and suddenly everybody starts running. You can see it on the video yourself. The officers who were at the back of the parade, which is where this occurred, have two priorities. The first priority is to stop and try to render aid, to make sure that people who have been injured and shot are getting the aid they need. And the other officers began setting up perimeters and broadcasting descriptions and did the best they could while the 5th District came to back up the parade detail officers. At the end of the day, our first responsibility is to do everything we can to protect life. And obviously, with that many people getting hurt and falling down, our officers were making sure that they were taking care of that first. Chief, have you been able to identify a target of the gunman at this point? Not yet. The investigation continues. And like I said a few minutes ago, our 5th District and the help that they've been getting is making tremendous headway. Tremendous headway in this case. Can you talk more about the involvement of other agencies and the FBI, what they're doing? Part of our strategy of dealing with these major events is we work with FBI, ATF, and DEF every single DEA every single day, and sometimes it, it should not be lost upon the people of New Orleans that these relationships are longstanding and occur every single day. So yesterday afternoon when we rang the bell and we needed some help, police officers from around New Orleans came to the 5th District to help with the calls and the backlog. ATF agents, DEA, and FBI agents that we work with routinely started getting phone calls. They started working their chains of information, and the next thing leads to us today working even more closely. So it is really just a misnomer to think that this type of relationship doesn't go on every single day. And in this particular case, of course, we've used their help. Last week, you made a big gang arrest. Uh, years ago, there was a gang that operated in the area of the 7th Ward, Hardheads. Do you have any reason to believe that this could be in any way gang-related or retaliation shooting involved in gang activity? We have not ruled out any of that. lifestyle that could be called gangs and groups, and it's their purpose to be criminal, and this may have something to do with that. As Commander Goodley continues his investigation, if we get there, we'll let you know right away. Are you worried something as brazen as this uh, would have the effect of, you know, kind of a chilling effect on the public's willingness to help police in these kinds of investigations? No, I actually hope it's the exact opposite, because it's the brazenness of a second line parade, which is one of the most culturally iconic events in the city of New Orleans goes on every weekend, has all types of celebrations and success and no injuries or whatever. This is a small, unusual event. This is one person, maybe more, who took it upon themselves to act out in a way that was irresponsible. We can specifically call to the people of New Orleans, the people who live in that neighborhood, the people who support the second line culture, the people who support the city, to say, we're not going to stand with that young man. We're going to call Crime Stoppers and say who he is, where does he live, what is he doing? You said violence, violence, violence has occurred after second line before. Your predecessor tried to limit permits for them as he revisited the policy. The community sort of uh, cried out and said, this is part of the culture they need to uh, continue. What are your thoughts on uh, keeping these events safe? Are you revisiting any policies? Would you beef up manpower for the next one? There is no question that second lines are a cultural, important factor and fact of life in the city of New Orleans. And this, we believe, had nothing to do with the second line, except it occurred where the second line was happening with Bayfield walking in. Secondly, the police department usually and almost always doubles the number of officers who are being paid for by the second line organization. That was the essence of the settlement back in 2009. So, for example, almost always when we have a large second line, if there's 10 or 12 officers on the paid detail, 
there will likely, uh, likewise be an equal number of officers in the surrounding neighborhood, paralleling the streets, etc. Yesterday, Commander Goodley had eight officers working on the day watch. His supervisor of the shift was within blocks when this happened and immediately got on the scene and took control of the scene. What will happen is, is when we make an arrest, as with all these types of cases, working closely with the district attorney's office, the right choices will be made. What's the right prosecution venue? That's a specialty that's really beyond the police. We'll make an arrest. I think that'll be uh, clear before long. And then from there, we'll discuss it with the district attorney, the U.S. attorney, whatever's the best charge. There was police activity today. Is that related to the investigation? We always go back and do re-canvassing after events like this. The next day, it's not unusual for you to see that. You go back to look to make sure nothing was missed, anything that was in the street that we might not have saw yesterday. Knock on some doors, talk to some people, try to get as much information as we can. Um, thank you. You have done more to help us than you know by putting out the information about Crime Stoppers. It works. We know that about 9 out of 10 people in New Orleans will call Crime Stoppers if they know information. And please choose to stand with the children who were injured. Don't choose to stand with the selfish person who